Hi there, it's John O'Hear. Now in this video, I'm going to outline in a little bit more detail all of the areas that we'll set up inside your account when, while we go through the Hive Practice Autopilot program. So the things that we'll first roll out here, uh, we have a Start Here app, which I'll show you to onboard all of your team members, a Processes app, those are the main things, and also a Hive Requests app to connect with us. Now, if you've watched this far, I'm sure you're very aware of the power of systemization of your business and actually having all of your processes documented, but this is very searchable. You can see if I just type in a keyword, I can immediately get all the instructions for anything to do with whatever I type in there. I can also drill down into sorting this in a multitude of different ways. And the way we normally do it is by activity area. We start with this red, blue, black or support delivery development. We've also got policy space there as well. We can also then drill down by the functional role. So in your practice, that might be receptionist, podiatrist, technician, principal, allied health assistant, etc. And that's very handy for, for, for sorting out job descriptions as well and assigning people who have a particular functional role to go through and learn all of the things that they have to do when they're onboarding. We also drill down by responsibility by team member. And this is particularly useful when for example, you have planned to get on a practice manager, but a lot of those roles that ordinarily would fall to a practice manager, for example, are falling to you. So you would assign responsibility to you, even though you're the principal, and the functional responsibility would be for practice manager, even though you are currently responsible for it. And then as soon as you do get to the stage where you could hire a practice manager, the role is already outlined and documented. Now, if you're feeling a little bit light on on your processes at the moment, then we in fact already have quite a lot of processes that are templates to get started with. Part of our assessment at the beginning of when we start working with you, particularly if you already do have quite a few processes, is to add in a lot of our suggested processes. So for example, if I was looking for feedback, I could go and see how uh, to start a process. Now, in addition to uh, setting up your existing processes, we'll help you organize them. We do have a suggested way to organize it, but this here, if you had no processes, would hopefully work maybe with slight customizations just out of the box, but we will set it up for the way that you already have your processes organized. Having three separate levels of breakdown for process organization seems to work really well for being able to find things. We will get the actual roles in your practice in there that you potentially have or want to have and we'll help you to assign a, a team member to every process that you have. We're also going to take responsibility for making sure your team are completely up to date and uh, on board with this. This is one of the great benefits of doing Practice Autopilot because we've created what we call a Start Here app and your team members will all have their own Start here or onboarding process. There are step-by-step -step instructions on all of the different things that uh, we will roll out inside your Podio account. And each of your team members will follow the instructions and then have to click off on whether that was not applicable, whether they've started the training and whether they've completed the training. And from a bird's eye view, you can quickly then look at how much of the training each of your team members has actually completed. And there'll be a complete record of when they've actually done it. As you can see there, I've clicked off on started. And now I've clicked off on completed. And there'll be a timestamp on that. So this works for you, by the way, so we will then get a, a, an idea of how much of your onboarding you've done yourself as well.
There are potentially more things, particularly if you're thinking about going through the QIP accreditation pr process for your practice, but that's another thing which I can explain if that's applicable for you. Now, while stage one is the place where everybody has to start, depending on your particular circumstances, you may start on any one of stages two, three, four, or five after you've, we've got this sorted out in your practice. From our experience, however, we think that it's easier to get all of the things that you have to do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis systemized and automated as stage two. Here's a live version of Troy Parsons practice up in Toowoomba. Uh, their daily tasks list is now in progress. And I can see from here, logging in from my office, what is actually happening at Troy's office right now. And it's just easy for me to do a quick scroll down and see, well, actually there's a couple of things pending here, but most of the things are completed. And if I just keep scrolling down, I can see where the front desk is actually up to at this stage. This really helps to keep track of who has done what and who has signed off on what. And it also helps the team members keep track of what they're meant to be doing so that they don't miss stuff because they've got lots going on all the time. So I can see here that this morning, Tegan signed off on all of these different tasks. And then after that, uh, Anita came in and did this work. And then, uh, Ali has obviously come on for the middle shift in Troy's practice. Again, this may just be one shift for you, but I think you get the point. There's a lot of accountability for who has done what, which just stops any of those little things that definitely need to get done from getting missed. Now, again, this may be slightly different for your particular practice, but we know that most people have those kinds of things inside there, and we have created a whole swag of apps to cover most of the things that happen within a health practice. In the delivery space, the patient's app is generally just a reflection of some kind of synchronization of the contact records between your patient management system and Podio. Even if you're using front desk, it's not necessarily an issue because we'll just import a CSV with all the contacts up to that date. Often the relevant workflows that come up in this space are orthotics, depending on whether you actually manufacture them in-house or whether you actually uh, order them externally. There may be footwear orders that you need to keep track of. And depending on your cadence of communication, you may have a meetings app just for your practitioners or that may or may not be relevant for your practice depending on the size of the team. Now just to give you an idea of how some of these things might work, I'll give you an example of how it works in Troy's practice. Now of course your workflow may be slightly different, but again this is the power of just having it customised by experts in this. In this case, somebody perhaps has their appointment which comes in directly from the patient management system. When the scan's completed, they just need to be dragged across there. The script checked, dragged and set the stage. When it goes into Mill Orthotics, in Troy's practice, he actually has a technician, then gets finished by that, dragged into the next column, check the orthotics, cover the orthotics, and then pigeonhole, which is Troy's process. And you can see very quickly exactly where each person is up to. So again, when we have our initial one-to-one -one assessment, we'll be just thinking about any of the particular workflows that you have that are currently not getting picked up, or maybe if you're missing certain steps, or even if you just don't have a clear picture of where any particular job is, no matter what the function of it is, any particular idea of where it is at any particular time. Now, I guess, for people who've done Mastermind, they'll be very familiar with this mastery cadence that we teach where we make sure that we've just got a way of recording all the communication and all the planning that we do. And that's what this space is set up for. So the idea of having a specific space set aside for development activities is that anything in here influences the future income or the future development of your practice. 
I'll show you ours here because uh, some of our clients may may uh, be sensitive. However, it's just nice to have a quick link to all of the important things, our dashboards, Zero and Ontraport for us, uh, the single page 12 month marketing plan, our rocks and our values. So if we come in here, it's just there and reminding us of what we're all about. Our meetings app, our rocks app, our quarterly strategic plans, they're all in line and will be in yours as well with the way that we run our coaching, our business coaching and planning. So for us, our leadership cadence is actually weekly and you can see that when you click here, these are actually automatically generated each week. We have an agenda which is automatically populated for our, our uh, one hour weekly meeting and you can then have a bit of a, a referral uh, on the conversations that have gone through. Because it's a strategic leadership meeting, there's always a link back to the quarterly plan. And then we always put on uh, action items at the end or at the end of the meeting or during the meeting as they come up. And finally, the HR app. Your team members are such an important resource and yet often what I see with practice owners is that it's just letting things like the check-in meetings get pushed back and instead of having them once a month, they go to two or three or maybe even six months. It's a great way to formalize your communication cadence. The development reviews, which again, hopefully you're running at about a six monthly interval, then also have a space for you and your team member to set goals and tasks related to their own personal bigger picture. They might get a bit of a, an idea of the importance of this when I just look at one of these demo clients in here. This is the template that we'd start off with, by the way, where we're very much proponents of the importance of a values-based business and working out your purpose. But keeping that front and center, keeping a, a, keeping a track of who's actually reviewing, who is the team member, the period, setting the agenda and asking them to do a self-assessment exercise before they actually even go into it. We'd put your values in here and ask your team members to explain how they had lived those values over the last 12 months. Just having these templates has been such an improvement for practices like Troy's when they were rolled out in his practice. Now again, this is not the only way to do your reviews. I would recommend you absolutely keep some of the things about this review template because it is a great thing to do. Uh, but when you get to the end of it, one of the things that I like, which possibly doesn't happen on every uh, development review, but it's this. This is a big thing for Troy because their practice purpose is to help you realize your potential and that extends to team members as well. And so they ask them to make some personal promises about goals uh, for work and for their home. And they also are trying to, as much as possible, allow the team member to develop or craft their own career. And then they both sign off on it as being an accurate reflection. Now the nice thing too about this setup is that you can then go and set tasks that are to be completed over the review period before the next one comes along. Now I realize I haven't even got to induction and I know that's probably a very big thing for you, but we have a great induction template that gets rolled out and also a process for vetting job applicants that can be implemented from a form on your website. Finally, we will set up a stage six area for outsourcing. We call it VA support. That may include anything that you need to manage with outsourcers in your practice and don't necessarily want them seeing anything else inside your workspaces. Or it may just be general administration. Even if you don't choose to use that at this stage, you'll have a framework for using it if you do decide to do it in the future. So I feel like I've probably been talking enough and hopefully this video has given you enough information that if this is the time for you to get started with systems that you could say, yes, let's jump on board with this. I've certainly really bought into the Podio tool myself and we have switched the hive over this year.
And if you're ready to take those next steps now, then have a head over to hivepractice.com forward slash autopilot. And if you're already watching this video on this page itself, there's two things you can do. Number one, click the get started on autopilot button. Uh, two places if you're in the UK or Ireland to pay in GBP or anywhere else in the world, get started on autopilot in Australian dollars. If you're not quite sure or if you need a little bit more help with your systems, please do book in a complimentary systems assessment. I would be delighted to help you have a look at the particular tools that you're using in your practice. Hope to see you in Podio soon.